While most of California is subject to some degree of fire hazard, there are specific features that make some areas more hazardous than others. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection is required by law to map areas of significant fire hazard based on fuel, terrain, weather, and other relevant factors. These designations are referred to as fire hazard severity zones. Like flood zone maps, fire hazard severity zone maps evaluate hazard, not risk, and there is an important difference between the two. Hazard is based on the physical condition that creates a likelihood and expected fire behavior over a 30 to 50 year period without considering short-term modifications such as fuel reduction efforts. Risk is the potential damage a fire can do to the area under existing conditions, including any modifications such as fuel reduction projects, defensible space, and ignition resistant building construction. CAL FIRE is required by state law to classify the severity of fire hazards in California. These fire hazard severity zones are in both the state responsibility area, where the state has financial responsibility for wildland fire protection and prevention, and the local responsibility areas where the local government is responsible for wildfire protection. Whether it's Lake Tahoe's majestic mountain lines or Santa Barbara's scenic coast, the updated maps incorporate improved fire science that accounts for the unique wildfire hazards throughout the state of California. The fire hazard severity zone model for wildland fire has two key elements, probability of an area burning and expected fire behavior. Hence, the factors considered in determining fire hazard are how often an area will burn and when it does burn, what characteristics might lead to buildings being ignited. These zones are assessed by a fire hazard score that accounts for the following factors. Fire history, existing and potential natural vegetation that fuels fire, predicted flame lengths, blowing embers, terrain, and typical weather for the area that contributes to fire growth. These maps depict the hazard level in the form of a zone from moderate, high, and very high. Classification of a zone as moderate, high, or very high fire hazard is based on a combination of how a fire will behave and the probability of flames and embers threatening buildings. Two, Each area of the map gets a score for flame length, embers, and the likelihood of the area burning. Scores are then averaged over the zones area, which vary in size from relatively small, 20-acre urban areas, to large wildland zones that have a minimum size of 200 acres. Final zone classification is based on the average score for the zone. Fire hazard severity zones are not, however, a structure loss model as key information regarding structure ignition such as roof types, window types, exterior construction materials, etc. is not included. Fire hazard severity zone maps are utilized for implementing wildland urban interface building standards for new construction, natural hazard real estate disclosure at the time of sale, 100 foot defensible space clearance requirements around buildings, property development standards such as road widths, water supply, and signage, and for consideration in city and county's future development. These maps were created so that public officials such as Board of Supervisors or City Council members can know where to apply mitigation measures to slow the rate of fire spread, thereby reducing the potential intensity of an uncontrolled fire that threatened to destroy life, property, and natural resources in the fire hazard severity zone. This planning tool is used to determine where regulations apply for safe community growth development within the fire hazard severity zone. Fire season is a term that is used every year as the hotter and drier months of summer approach and is part of the environment that makes up California. The fire hazard severity zone maps are the first step in providing us as Californians a means to recognize the fire hazard areas, make informed decisions to be proactive and not reactive, and take the collective action to combat the ongoing wildfire problem our state is faced with. This resiliency planning can improve response and recovery for communities across the state when wildfire occurs. You can learn more about the fire hazard severity zones, including frequently asked questions, by visiting the Office of the State Fire Marshal's webpage. You can also learn how to be ready for wildfire at readyforwildfire.org.